Right now, live at 5, today is the day many Minnesota businesses will reopen their doors to customers. In-person dining is now open in Minnesota. What you need to know. Plus, back in class. Some local schools begin in-person learning today after months of being virtual. And in Washington, calls for impeachment continue as President-elect Biden prepares for inauguration. And later, it's the Super Bowl of technology. And this year, it's going virtual. We have a breakdown of the newest technologies. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look over the city of Duluth on a day many Minnesotans have been waiting for. Following the governor's orders, bars, restaurants, and entertainment venues are able to open their doors to customers once again. More on that in just a moment. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. House Democrats have formally introduced an article of impeachment against President Trump. And leadership says it will move forward on it this week if the 25th Amendment is not invoked soon. Congressional Republicans are expected to hold a conference call sometime today. Skylar Henry reports from Capitol Hill. I object. Objection is heard. Republicans blocked the Democrats' resolution calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove President Trump from office. The move sets up a full House vote Tuesday. It gets rid of him. He's out of office. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says that if the vice president does not respond in 24 hours, Democrats will move forward with an article of impeachment accusing the president of inciting an insurrection. A House impeachment vote could come as soon as Wednesday, but if passed, the Senate may not begin a trial until after President-elect Joe Biden begins his term. My feeling is if we impeach him this week, that it should be immediately transmitted to the Senate and we should uh, try the case as soon as possible. Several Republicans have pushed back on impeachment talk, saying the move could be inflammatory. With the inauguration just nine days away, President-elect Joe Biden says he's not worried about taking the oath of office publicly. I'm not afraid of taking the oath outside, and we've been getting briefed. Let's go! The chief of the National Guard says up to 15,000 troops could be deployed to the nation's capital between now and then. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is calling on the public to stay home, and she's asked the president to issue a pre-emergency declaration. This inaugural planning period has to be very different than all the others. President Trump has been largely silent these past few days after Twitter and other social media platforms blocked his access. The FBI continues to ask for help identifying those who participated in last Wednesday's assault. So far, at least 58 people have been arrested in connection to activities in or around the Capitol, and the Justice Department has filed more than 55 criminal cases. Meanwhile, Minnesota's governor is denouncing state Republican leaders for refusing to uh, say the 2020 election was free and fair. Governor Tim Walz said troopers had to take his crying 14-year-old son to safety last Wednesday during a Storm the Capitol protest in St. Paul, which later shifted to the governor's residence. That rally coincided with the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol. Top Republican leadership in the legislature, Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka and House Minority Leader Kurt Doubt, both agreed Joe Biden won, but they stopped short of rejecting claims the election was rigged. Meanwhile, top Democrats in Minnesota's House of Representatives sent a letter to Vice President Mike Pence calling on him to invoke the 25th Amendment. This comes after the violent riot at the U.S. Capitol last week. Calling it a failed insurrection by President Trump and his allies, they claim the president is a threat to democracy and future elections and is no longer fit to hold the office of the presidency. After nearly two months, you can now grab a table inside a Minnesota bar or restaurant. Governor Tim Walz's latest COVID restriction dial back took effect today. That means indoor dining is allowed once again. Restaurants and bars can only be at 50% capacity and they must close by 10 p.m. Entertainment venues like bowling alleys, theaters and museums can also reopen at 25% capacity. This change comes as on the same day, Minnesota reported 980 new cases of COVID-19. Compare that to the more than 7,000 cases a day the state was averaging back in mid-November when this second round of restrictions 
was first announced. Tonight, we're checking in with Duluth restaurants about what the change means for them and how they're making it all work safely. CBS 3's Leon Valdez has more. The manager of Trophy Cafe in Gary New Duluth says it's surreal seeing people eating inside the restaurant, but it's a moment they've been waiting for for a long time. Trophy Cafe opened its doors for customers at 7 a.m. The restaurant is operating at 50% capacity per Governor Walz's orders. Some of the booths are closed off for service. The manager of the cafe, Mike O'Hara, says the past 40-some days were tough. They lost $52,000, and even though they had a takeout option, they still had to cut some staff. O'Hara says they floated the idea of shutting down completely, but it never happened. The cafe also didn't take any federal or state assistance. Based on our, our size and our staffing, you know, I think it's, it's a pretty complicated process to go through, and originally... Um, we were hoping that that original order was uh, a lot shorter. It was originally slated to expire, I think, December 18th. And then, of course, it was extended. O'Hara says they will still offer takeout orders for anyone that doesn't feel comfortable eating inside. Thanks, Leanne. With many restaurants struggling as the pandemic continues, a new one with a unique twist is coming to Duluth. Hotbox Duluth plans to open downtown later this month. They'll offer to-go food themed as kids' meals for grown-ups. Think cheesy hash browns, deep-fried pickle roll-ups, and Swedish meatballs. It will all be served out of Zeitgeist Kitchen, which has been for rent since Zeitgeist temporarily closed last year. Owner Rob Abrahamson says this is the perfect way to test the waters. I know so many restaurants and so many other business owners are having such a hard time and it's weird to like start something during this, but it, it just worked out so perfect for me and it's like I've been waiting for this opportunity for 15, 20 years now, so I'm just going to go for it. Hotbox hopes to be open by the end of the month, operating on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Meanwhile, some Superior students returned to the classroom today. After going fully remote in November, the district is back to hybrid learning. Those who chose virtual learning will continue to do so. The district is prioritizing in-person learning for elementary schools. That means if too many staff members get infected, the middle and high schools will return to full-time virtual learning before younger students would. The next group of Wisconsinites could start receiving the COVID-19 vaccine soon. A subcommittee is considering opening vaccines for those 70 and older and limited groups of essential workers. That could happen once most health care workers and nursing home residents receive the shot. But it would be a slight departure from federal guidelines, which say the next age group would be those 75 and older. The Wisconsin Department of Health could vote tomorrow. Meanwhile, the vaccine will be available to police and fire starting a week from today. We reported last week the Superior Fire Department already received the vaccine. The fire chief told us today Douglas County signed off on early vaccination since fire crews are also first responders for medical calls. Five cases of a more contagious variant of the coronavirus have been found in the Twin Cities area. Minnesota health officials say the variant, which was first detected in December in the U.K., was identified from residents in four Minnesota counties. The discovery raises the potential for the virus to spread even more rapidly. Health officials say they don't know if any of the five people had been hospitalized. At least two of the five recently traveled abroad. Dave's here for a first look at the weather. Dave, we're coming off of a pretty decent weekend. It was fairly warm. Yeah, fairly warm. Not much snow like no. the past week or so. Up towards the Hibbing Chisholm area. Did you get any sun this weekend, Kristen? No sun. No, we didn't get any here mm -mm. in Duluth on Sunday either. I was hoping for a partly cloudy sky, yeah. but it stayed cloudy, and it likely will stay cloudy tonight perhaps tomorrow and Wednesday as well, as that small, dry trough of lower pressure works through the area. No room left over for snow, but it will keep the clouds up. Once we get to Thursday, though, a different situation could finally face us and will break the snow drought. That low pressure system is coming out of the Pacific Northwest, and by the time it gets here Thursday, it kicks up a 60% chance for snow. Will it be light or heavy? I'll show you the latest theories on that in just a little bit. But our short-term forecast says, indeed, staying mostly cloudy to partly sunny tonight and through tomorrow. High temp near 30 is warmer than normal again, Kristen. Once we shake off the Thursday snow, will we get an Arctic outbreak? Well, I'll talk about that theory coming up in just a few more minutes as well.
All right, thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, a celebration after a difficult battle with COVID-19, plus a renewed effort to recruit healthcare professionals to northern Minnesota. City by City is next. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS3. Join us weeknights for Live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. It's the final days of Homes New Year's Sale. Take up to an extra 10% off sale prices, plus zero down, 0% zero interest financing on any purchase until 2022, and free no-contact shipping. Up to 10% off sale prices. Hurry, Home Furniture's New Year's Sale ends Saturday. At Miners National Bank of Eveleth, we know it takes knowledge, dedication, and teamwork to be the home loan experts. With over 115 years and four family generations, we have proven we have the experience to be the best in the business. For your first or next home loan, call the experts you can trust at Miners National Bank. Their teamwork is unmatched, and they will bump out any rough spots along the way. Make your house a home with Miners National Bank. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Little, owner of Your Home Improvement Company. 2020 was an unbelievable year for all of us. As a family-owned and operated business, we have been doing our best to stay focused on you this past year with our zero interest and zero payments until 2022 program. Thank you for allowing us to assist you in updating your most lived-in asset during this difficult time, your home. From all of us at Your Home Improvement Company, Bath Planet, and my family to yours, have a healthy, happy, and safe new year. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Ion Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association. During Home's New Year's Sale at Sleep Express, get 0% interest financing on any Tempur-Pedic mattress for six years. Plus, Home will give you a bonus $300 shopping card, free delivery, setup, and a 120-day comfort guarantee. Home's New Year's Sale at Sleep Express. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look at the ski lift at Giants Ridge in Biwabic, Minnesota. Dave will have your full forecast in just a few minutes, but first, let's take a look around the region. A financial incentive to bring more health care professionals to northeastern Minnesota, plus a sweet celebration after a Buell man's successful recovery from a tough battle with COVID-19. All that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. We're going to start off in both Chisholm and Ely today, where a loan forgiveness program is strengthening the region's health care and economy. Two dentists recently relocated to northeastern Minnesota to help alleviate a dental shortage in the area. That's according to the IRRB. Both were recipients of the Martha Mordini Rukavina Loan Forgiveness Program, which was supported with a grant from the IRRB. Dr. Jennifer Enich was born and raised in Chisholm, where she is now practicing. And Dr. Gretchen Kreklow is now residing and practicing in Ely. You can visit the IRRB's website for more information on the Loan Forgiveness Program. Meanwhile, Brighton Beach will be closed for the next two weeks starting today. Crews will be preparing the area for trail construction, which is set to happen this spring. The park will be closed to vehicle traffic. Work is expected to be completed by January 25th. And we're going to end on a sweet story today. The community of Buell came together Sunday to celebrate a successful COVID-19 recovery for one of their own. Jimmy Porter spent more than 30 days in a Duluth hospital due to COVID-19. His recovery was difficult, but he was finally able to come home to his wife Sylvia last week. And he was greeted by a parade of more than 50 cars, including the Chisholm Police Department. Mary Pervanzi sent us these pictures and told us there were a lot of happy tears shed as friends and neighbors welcomed Jimmy home. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. 
Still to come on Live at 5, the hottest trends in technology are on display at a major tech event, but this year, everything went virtual. Well, for the past week or so, it's been warmer than normal and cloudier than normal. Today's top temp, 30. It could get even warmer than that by midweek, and that could help trigger finally some snow in our region. We'll talk about the odds of a snowy payoff come Thursday and Friday, and perhaps a chill on the heels of that. All that with the seven-day forecast right after our break. They're live, they're local. Watch the CBS3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Mack tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. With over 40 filtration systems, including the world's best softener, no one filters more than Culligan Water. The only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Still hard to find a spot, just easier to park. Still the big move, just more moving. Still singing, just more in tune. Still the gang's all here, just less are we there yet. The Chevy family of SUVs, making life's journey just better. Get a $5,500 cash allowance on most 2020 Equinox models. Plus, current Chevy owners with an eligible GM credit card get an additional $1,750 total allowance. Visit truenorthchevydealers.com. I'm Steve Scooby. I'm one of the general surgeons at St. Luke's. I love being a surgeon, and I take my job very seriously. But it's always nice to go home and spend time with my children and focus on having a balance between being at work and spending time with my family. Like most surgeons, I really enjoy being in the operating room. However, I think the best part of my job is being in clinic and seeing patients come back to me fixed and feeling better. Knowing that they're doing well after surgery is really satisfying to me. We're in your neighborhood with news that matters to you. For the Christmas weekend has come and gone. A six-month search has ended in Ashland. And folks accepted a proposal to turn the broke down town. for 2021 was set at 17. Join us weeknights for Live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. Arctic Cast snowmobile sale happening now at RJ Sport & Cycle. Coming up tonight at 6, UMD is welcoming students back on campus this week after a mostly virtual year of learning. And we've been virtually free of snow for a while, but maybe by Thursday we could get some. We'll talk about it at 6. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS 3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, first, let's talk about our low temperatures that came around this morning. They're part of the warm spell we've had for about a week, so we'll zoom in and talk about how toasty some towns were. Mid-20s from Ely through Ora to Hibbing and Grand Rapids, upper 20s, International Falls and Moose Lake into Wisconsin. Superior not reporting in this morning, but mid-20s from Ashland to Hayward. And upper teens still warmer than normal in the Upper Peninsula. This warm trend probably will be with us, I'm thinking, Oh, well, through midweek at least, then we'll start to cool for the weekend. But not drastically. Not a big Arctic outbreak on the heels of a snow system by Thursday. Just gentler snows and then slightly cooler back towards normal. Happening right now at the airport in Duluth, 29 degrees for the current temp. Westerly, southwesterly winds going 5 miles per hour. And our air pressure is only a little bit on the higher side at the surface at 29.96 inches of mercury. But like for the past week or so, not high enough to put down cloud development as a small trough of lower pressure works by our region. Now here's a look at our current temperatures, which are in the upper 20s now in the Upper Peninsula. Low 30s through northern Wisconsin and upper 20s to about 30 degrees for many towns in Minnesota. By Wednesday, we just might go towards 35. Thursday's the day we get a snow chance, and then after that, the temperatures cool back towards normal. Okay, right now, Doppler map shows there's a center of lower pressure skirting along the Canadian border, but it's another weak one, so it's bringing clouds into our area and a few snow showers in northwestern Minnesota, but I think that's going to be about all that is written about this low. It'll keep the clouds up, but we're not going to get much in the way of snow. And similar conditions should be with us then for Tuesday and Wednesday. Cloudy at night, partly sunny during the day, dry and warmer than normal. But the day of change just might be Thursday. This low pressure system will struggle its way across the Rocky Mountains, get into the plains, come our way, and then by Thursday, it becomes a 60% chance for light snow, which may only devolve to a 50% chance for light snow 
on Friday. And each day, if it gets one to two inches, maybe we'll have two to four fresh inches of snow to work with once we get into Saturday. And again, Saturday will cool down a little bit, but not drastically so. Tonight in Minnesota, low temps should run from about 16 inland to 22 by the lake. Mostly cloudy sky above and more patchy fog at the surface. Same story we've been telling for a week. Mostly cloudy tonight in Wisconsin and Michigan too with patchy fog possible. So more of that rime frost could be popping up. Low temps will be upper teens. For tomorrow daytime, high temps in Wisconsin and Michigan will be in the lower 30s. And of course, that's a good 10 degrees warmer than normal, maybe even 12 degrees. Partly sunny sky will try to peak out in the afternoon, at least briefly. And it'll be partly sunny in Minnesota as well. High temps, about 30 to 32 degrees. Now we fire up the forecast for the next seven days. And we'll spike at 35 on Wednesday. We'll keep a hold of the partly sunny sky through Wednesday as well. There's the snow chance Thursday and Friday, 50 to 60% chance for 1 to 2 inches each day. Not really a hassle, but perhaps a nuisance on the roadway, so be ready for that. Then cloudier and calmer as we lead towards Martin Luther King Jr. Day next Monday. Usually that day is really cold. This one, normal. 6 for a low, 19 for the high. Thanks, Dave. It's dubbed the Super Bowl of Technology. CES, also known as the Consumer Electronics Show, displays the newest devices and gadgets. But the pandemic has changed this year's event dramatically. Nancy Chen explains. CES is usually a massive event, bringing together more than 100,000 people in Las Vegas for a look at the very latest technology. But COVID has forced this year's convention to go completely virtual. Welcome to CES 2021. It's the largest innovation event in the world, probably the largest business event in the world. Gary Shapiro heads the Consumer Technology Association, which puts on the show every year. He says the online event allows for a wider global audience. It allowed us to reinvent the CES so that we could think about it without the constraints physically, which is perhaps a once in a lifetime experience. The OLED Evo. Companies are demonstrating new products in glossy pre-produced presentations. That includes LG showing off a transparent TV that can be used to check social media in the bedroom or can work as a menu at a restaurant. There's also a robot that uses UV light to reduce bacteria and viruses like COVID-19. And speaking of robots, Samsung has one that can do the dishes or bring you a drink of water. It's a bummer. It's a bummer not to be able to go touch everything. Lindsay Turntine is with the tech news outlet CNET. She says not being able to see the products in person creates some challenges. I am certain that CES will happen in person again. But when it does, there may be some aspects of it that have changed a little bit as a result of this experience. The people behind CES say future conventions will likely feature a hybrid model with both in-person and virtual aspects, allowing businesses that can't come to Vegas to still come to the show. CES continues until the end of the week. Still to come, a popular cross-country ski race is cutting ties with Enbridge after a past partnership. Details after the break. Benedictine Living Community of Duluth, where health, wellness, and choice come to life. Nestled on the beautiful campus of the St. Scholastica Monastery and the College of St. Scholastica, the Benedictine Living Community provides a full range of living options and care services. This continuum of care is designed to be seamless to help our residents to age in place. Visit us today. Benedictine Living Community of Duluth. Living fully, living well. Truck toppers, lids, liners, and accessories. Northwest Outlet is your truck topper headquarters of the Northland. Northwest Outlet has a large variety of ARE toppers for all makes and models of trucks, foreign or domestic, in all kinds of custom colors and styles and free installation. ARE's smooth, sculptured profiles and tight fit make it hard to see where the cab ends and the topper begins. Beautiful and rugged ARE has the highest quality construction for strength and durability. Northwest Outlet, 1814 Belknap Superior, the store that saves you more. Don't let the weather ruin your day. Covered by a winter storm watch. Dave Anderson, Caitlin Moffin, and Peter Kavitkowskis. The CBS3 weather team. Tracking more than just severe storms. Dave Anderson. Heart attacks and strokes happen. Even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. 
heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me to understand how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me at work when I lead by example. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you, too, can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting NationalGuard.com. Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Ion Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to the Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Local news and local weather here on CBS 3. The Berkey is ending its sponsorship deal with Enbridge, citing concerns about sustainability and climate change. Berkey leaders say they made the decision after feedback from the community. They say their relationship with Enbridge didn't mesh with the Berkey Green Initiative. The race says it's making every effort to find sustainable race practices, promote healthy activity and thoughtful land use while working with like-minded partners. The Berkey returned Enbridge's sponsorship money. Enbridge released a statement in response saying the company sponsored the Berkey because it wanted to contribute to the local economy and support skiers. They say the Berkey Green Initiative also lines up with their efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The company plans to donate the return sponsorship money to another nonprofit in the Hayward area. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, with alarming new images of the assault, Democrats announced they will impeach President Donald Trump on Wednesday. Plus, the FBI manhunt seeking information to find this man and the warning that extremists plan to storm all 50 states and the nation's capital, the country's security on edge. And all it takes is one good man. How one quick-thinking officer potentially saved lives during the assault on the Capitol. Those stories and more tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Change the future of medicine from the convenience of home. Join the All of Us Research Program to help improve health research and speed up medical breakthroughs. Visit EssentiaHealth.org slash all of us to learn more. Did you know that 178 million Americans are missing at least one tooth? It's, it's true. true. That's why at Affordable Dentures and Implants, we only focus on tooth replacement solutions. Whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we have an experienced dentist who can create a new smile just for you. At a price that's affordable. Because at Affordable Dentures and Implants, we want you to go, go ahead, ahead and, and smile. smile. In recent times, we've witnessed the brave faces of many people all over the world. Now, it's your turn to be one of them. Memorial Blood Centers is building a local and national supply of convalescent plasma to treat patients with serious or immediately life-threatening COVID-19 infections. If you have recovered from COVID-19 or tested positive for the antibodies, we need your help. To donate convalescent plasma, visit NBC.org. If you can't give convalescent plasma, you can still save lives by giving blood. Find the home of your dreams with Homes by Edmonds. Whether you are buying or selling, trust Duluth's oldest real estate company, Homes by Edmonds, LLP. Sunday mornings at 1030 on CBS3. Hi, I'm Steve Little, owner of your home improvement company. 2020 was an unbelievable year for all of us. 
As a family owned and operated business, we have been doing our best to stay focused on you this past year with our zero interest and zero payments until 2022 program. Thank you for allowing us to assist you in updating your most lived in asset during this difficult time, your home. From all of us at your home improvement company, Bath Planet, and my family to yours, have a healthy, happy, and safe new year. Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show! Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Celebrating 30 years in business in 2021 with 30% off storewide. Downtown Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a look back at our top story from today and we'll let you know what we're working on for tonight at 6. After nearly two months, you can now grab a table inside a Minnesota bar or restaurant. Governor Tim Walz's latest COVID restriction dial back took effect today. That means indoor dining is allowed once again. Restaurants and bars can only be at 50% capacity and they must close by 10 p.m. Entertainment venues like bowling alleys, theaters and museums can also reopen at 25% capacity. And coming up tonight at 6, starting on Wednesday, students at the University of Minnesota Duluth will head back to class for the spring semester. Tonight at 6, we're hearing from campus officials on what the spring semester will look like as students learn both digitally and in person. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We hope to see you right back here at 6.